So recently I had to automate some stuff. And for that, I needed to run some of the tasks locally or as part of a CI pipeline. And I was looking like, what should I use to kind of do it in the most simplest way possible and flexible way possible and in a way that I can do it locally as well as integrated with any CI ecosystem whenever required. So the thing was that I needed to kind of uh, create Kubernetes cluster, then install marketplace application from CEO marketplace and check if the application is installed or not installed, if it's success, then write it to a file. If it's a failure, then also write it to a file with the pod logs. So these were some of the things that I wanted to do. And I wanted to do it for over 100 apps and test it for Kubernetes in an automated way. Now, there are solutions for it. But in this video, we'll be discussing about the solution that I took. And it is Task. So before moving ahead and learning about tasks, make sure to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and do the usual stuff. So there are multiple solutions when we talk about creating and automating such kind of scenarios by writing certain tasks. You can use make files. You can even go for Dagger. By the way, we have a Dagger workshop live by Solomon Hikes, founder of Docker um, and the Dagger team on April 4th. So make sure to check that live stream out as well. Coming back to task file. Yes, there are some like I found it very easy. That's why I just used it. And the big bake files are not easy to read. Task file, I believe, is kind of the modern solution for the people in the cloud native ecosystem, especially because you are now used to the YAML ecosystem and task file is YAML based, where you can define the tasks as the hierarchy, easy to read, easy to create the task. And you will be able to run them in parallel, single, depends on just like your Docker Compose style uh, of writing, it is kind of similar. But for the tasks that you want to run actually locally or remote. So what I'll do is, I'll show you the tasks that I actually created and then show you how seamlessly it works locally and then how I integrated it with GitHub Actions as well. Like pretty simple, uh, both of them. So we'll directly move and start with the task file. It's not something that I, I will tell you step by step, but I'll tell you the requirement that I needed. And it actually covers a lot that you can do with the task file. And uh, then based on your use case, you can use the documentation. And documentation is pretty kind of straightforward. If you go to taskfile.dev and if you see the usage, you can actually see, you know, the getting started, like it's version, you write a task and then you give it a name and then the commands that you actually want to perform as simple as that. And these are the supported file names. So task file.yaml and some of the other names that you can use. And then all the stuff, most of the stuff that you'll be able to use. So it's a big task file that I have written and we'll go through this one at least step by step so that you know what exactly it is capable of doing. And it actually makes a difference. So first of all, the name is task file.yml we can define in task file. So this is version three. In task file, we can define global variables. So I have defined some global variables. For example, I have defined the cluster name as apps demo cluster. Remove apps, like these are the apps that I want to remove. Result file, this is the result file location that I would be using. Cube version, empty is the default one that we'll be using. App list path means the list from where I'm trying to read and there is a command that I'm using it to read. Then cube config path would be temporary with the appending with a cluster name. So when you want to use the global variables, when you want to use the value of the global variables, you can use it in this way. So you have curly braces, curly braces dot and cluster name and then curly braces end for both. So this is how you would use the global variables inside the task file. And then you start specifying the tasks. So now the first task here is set up tools. So first I want to check whether the CBO CLI and the cube CTL is actually installed. So it checks. Uh, now in the CMDs, you can define CMD for this particular task. So I have some of the CMD, for example, just whatever I type, right? The commands. 
So there's a if, and then there is a else standard stuff, and then setting up the CVO API key. What I have done is I have exported CVO API key as the environment variable. And inside the task file, I can actually use it. And same with the CI GitHub Actions that I'll be showing you how I have used it. Next is kubectl. So making sure kubectl is there. If not, then install it. And then else it is already installed. Silent is false. If silent is true, then probably all this, whatever you're seeing, it won't be appearing. Silent false means it all the stuff will be appearing. So the next task is kind of where the game begins. And this is the task that probably we'll be calling first uh, after this particular task of setup tools. It basically means reading first the app from the app.list and testing each one of them because that's the whole game, right? So here the commands are pretty simple. First you cat the app list and then there is a for loop. So for loop and start the for loop and in the for loop I am trying to call each of the tasks which are below. So first is task deploy app, task get cube config, task check app status and task delete cluster. So each of the tasks can be done. There are some of the other things that you can actually do like task dependencies. So you can actually create a task that depends on other tasks. So you can see that the depth for the assets are JS and CSS. So these will be first built and here assets will always run right before build. So you can see because in build we have defined the dependency as assets. So we can always do use this and there is also another thing called calling another task. So if you have a task in the main task, in the command, you can actually call one task and then call another task and then call this particular task. So using this, you can use both or one, do that. For this particular case, I have used for loop and here it is actually going in sequence, which is what I want. So the first task that goes is the deploy app. And here the variable, so you can, what you can do is when you call the task and you can individually call a task as well. So you, when you call a task, you can actually give a task name and then the variable to be passed. And here we are trying to pass the app name. So here we are deploying the app and what it is trying to do is after all the checks, it is just trying to create a Kubernetes cluster using CO CLI, CO Kubernetes create, cluster name, region, nodes, application, the real application that we want to install and remove application from the global variable that we have defined. And the version command, this one is now like, uh, there is no error for this, but we should be setting the version as well. Right now it's nothing, so it will create the default Kubernetes version. And the vars that it can read, so while calling, you need to pass this app name. So next is the kube config, getting the kube config file. Um, it will wait for like 30 seconds. It will check attempting. And this is the command. So, CVO Kubernetes config this and saving it to the cube config path that we have defined in the global variable. Then is the main thing. So, checking the app status. So, whenever there is an app that is installed on CVO Kubernetes, it creates a job for that particular application. And if that job is success, means the app was installed successfully. And if not, then the app failed and then the, the, the pod corresponding to that should be errored out. So, here... We give it like five minutes of time. And uh, what we do is getting the job name. So first is getting the job name. So kubectl, kubeconfig file, that path, getting the job name and gripping it because the job name is not as straightforward. It is auto-generated. So we have to do some SED and stuff to get it. Now, after the job is found, it says job is true. And then there are two things. So we can actually find from a job whether it succeeded or not because the status gets updated. So there is a status for succeeded, there's a status for failed when you do hyphen o json. That's what we have done. If succeeded is one, then app is successfully installed and we are writing it to the results file from to the location that was defined in the global variables. If it failed, then we are writing that it failed, but also we are trying to find the corresponding pod for that particular job using this particular command. So get pod hyphen L job name and getting it and then after getting it we are trying to get the logs for that particular pod and also save it to the results file and after that we are trying to kind of delete the cluster that is the last 
job. So that's pretty much it. And this is the file cat app list. So now we are trying to run the task, task deploy and test app. So for now it is running Argo CD and it will start creating CMO Kubernetes create this cluster name and the applications Argo CD and it has already started creating a three node K3S cluster. And if we go here, we can actually see in the CO dashboard that a demo cluster has started being created. So while this is running, I would like to move to the GitHub Actions part of it to show how easy it is to run locally and integrate it with the CI pipeline. So in this also, we have a task file that is exactly the same. So there is nothing that is changed for this particular task file as well. Uh, the results file I have created in the temp directory, which I have to change actually to the local. So because that is more viable solution for that. Now coming to dot GitHub workflows main dot YAML, which is a GitHub action. So it is running on Ubuntu latest, setting up the go installing tasks. So installing task is pretty simple, just a curl command and then setting the path and then running the task file command. So in this particular case, yes, task setup tools is required because we know inside the runner, the CO CLI and the kubectl won't be there. So they both should be there. Plus, we are now getting the secrets, which is the ENV from which the CO, one of the task command that is running, they are using the CO API key and that is coming from the secrets. So inside the actions secret, you have to actually create it, which is over here. So if you go to the settings part of it, and if you go to the secrets and variables, so secrets for actions, okay, too many clicks. So secrets for actions, you can see CO API key. So I have already added that particular key. So it will read and rest of the things remain same. Task deploy apps. Now it's two more steps are just to get the results in the particular directory and then committing it to this. So what it does and it creates the results folder and then it creates the particular app.txt result in this particular case. And you can also see in the actions run that exactly this is what happened. So if you see the run task file commands, so you can see the cluster created and after that all the things um, they happen step by step, getting the cube config file, checking the app status and moving the results file. We can see the cluster is created. So I think we should be on to second step. Oh, we are already done with the second step as well. So attempting to retrieve the cube config file, cube config file is successfully ret retrieved. We can actually see that. And next task is checking app status. So check app status. So this is what it is trying to check. So the job has been found and it is also now deleted. So the task for deleting the cluster is also completed. And then it has now created the second cluster for testing the Rancher application. So right now it was doing it for Argo CD. Now it is doing for Rancher application. And what we can see is that ls slash temp, we should have the app result. And if I cat, the last one should be for Argo CD on Kubernetes version is a success. So Argo CD was successfully installed. And now it is trying to do the Rancher installation. Now the Rancher current version doesn't support Kubernetes 1.28 and we have Kubernetes 1.28 version that gets installed by default on Cebo Kubernetes. So you have the 1.28 version over here. So ideally the app should fail and it should give us the error message. So for this particular application, it should actually give us the error that uh, application was failed and also try to get fetch the logs from that particular pod so that we have the meaningful error. So the cluster is created. We can go back and we'll be able to see that it is trying to now fetch the, yes, the cluster is created, uh, fetching the cube config file. So it is now trying to fetch the cube config file. And after fetching the cube config file, it will fetch the results. So I'll skip this particular portion till it gets completed. I'll just show you what went inside that particular file. And now you can see that it is fetching the logs from the failed pod. Now we go back and we try to cat. We can actually see 
after the Argo CD was success, cancel was failed and these are the logs for it. And in one particular log error, we can actually see that the chart requires cube version less than 1.28, which is incompatible with the version 1.28.7. So that's a practical use case. Like I had this particular thing to automate and I did it using task file. It works and this is how it works. So we are reading from a file. We are writing to a file. In this particular task file, we are also using the environment variables. We are using different tasks. We are using looping. We are doing all the complex commands and everything is super readable. And also the same task file runs locally and same task file have been integrated with the GitHub Actions. I'll put the GitHub repository link in the description of the video as well. So yeah, that was it about task file. I just created it. So I thought I'll also create a short video and put it so that if you want to automate some of your tasks with ease, without writing any programming language and stuff and doing it without the mess of the make files, so you can do it using task files. That's what it is. So if you like task file, then let me know in the comments. And if you're using task file, then also let me know in the comments. If you have some other tools, then also let me know in the comments. And if you do not want to use task files, then also let me know in the comments. And also do not forget to check out the Dagger stream on 4th of April by Solomon Heights and Dagger team so that we can learn about Dagger and how we can actually automate the containerization stuff within the pipelines using Dagger. That's it for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and share it with your friends so that everyone can start using task files. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.